Hey everybody, today I want to talk about how to stand up for your own truth, how to have your own values that direct your life instead of being directed by everybody else's opinion. Now this is something that people talk about all the time, right? They say that you should be authentic and you should be true to yourself and you should not be afraid to be unique. Don't try to be like everybody else because everybody else is taken, etc, etc, etc. So most people have some vague notion that this is important, but they don't really know why it's important. They don't know how to do it. They don't know, in many cases, how to even have their own values and live their lives according to them. And so they don't really do a very good job of following their own advice, which you've probably noticed if you watch how people behave. Now, most people live their lives primarily for the impression that they leave on other people rather than for their own values. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you why it's so important. I'm gonna tell you what it really means to live for your own values. And most importantly, I'm gonna tell you how to do it. I just finished reading what was probably the best book, like the most emotionally compelling book that I've ever read on this topic, called The Fountainhead by Anne Rand. And this is a novel, it's fiction, and so for you guys that, that are like me and you read mostly non-fiction because you're looking to learn new things, well don't think that you can't learn anything from fiction because there's a ton you can learn from fiction. And fiction has this way of of demonstrating principles in a way that really pull at your heartstrings a lot better than nonfiction does. And so this book really demonstrates vividly what life looks like for somebody who's true to himself and what life looks like for somebody who's not true to himself in a way that really grabbed me. So stay tuned, by the way, for my next video, which is going to be some of the best quotes from The Fountainhead. So whether you read the book or you haven't, uh, that video is going to be awesome. It's really going to illustrate everything that I'm saying here. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button and choose all so you get all my notifications. So whenever I upload a new video such as that one, you'll be the first to know. Okay, so why should you be true to yourself? Why should you stand up for your own values? When we live in a society where the values are dictated to us from top down, they are forced down our throat from every propaganda outlet, and the people who deviate from those, those non-values that are forced on us are punished harshly in some cases. We're labeled all sorts of nasty things. We're deplatformed in some cases. We're ostracized from all of our friends who buy into the propaganda, or in many cases don't actually buy into the propaganda, but feel that they have to demonstrate their loyalty to the propaganda uh, in order to, to cover for their feelings of inadequacy because they don't actually believe in it. So a lot of people would say that you should just go along to get along, and I understand the logic of that, but I would submit to you that that's not the best way to live your life. The reason that you want to speak the truth the best that you can, and by the way, uh, you're not always going to be right, and that's okay to recognize that, that you speak your truth the best that you know how, and if you're wrong, then people will correct you, right? So you're making yourself better even by speaking your truth even when you're wrong. But whether you're wrong or right, if you're speaking your truth, you have that inner peace of knowing that what's coming out of your mouth is the same thing that's in your heart. You don't have to deal with the kind of cognitive dissonance that the masses have to deal with every single day because the things that they're saying are the things that they're told to say and they know that it's not right, it's not true to themselves. They have to deal with that kind of cognitive dissonance. That's the thing that's going to keep them up at night. That's the thing that's going to absolutely destroy their self-respect, but you are going to speak your truth and you, as a result, whatever the society outside does to you, you get to keep your self-respect and that's worth a lot. Furthermore, if you speak your truth, you're going to push a lot of people away. A lot of fakers, a lot of people that just accept the propaganda that's pushed on them are not going to want to associate with you. You're going to lose friends, you're going to be made fun of, people won't return your calls, it's going to happen. But what you get instead is something infinitely more valuable, and that is people who are also willing to speak the truth will gravitate towards you, and those will become your friends, and those will be the people that you actually want to have in your life. Those are called true friends. Those are people who respect you for you, rather than just wanting you to be a mirror of themselves. Those are going to be the people who are willing to stand by you, who are willing to support you, and perhaps most importantly of all, who are willing to correct you if you're wrong, and thereby make you a better person. So you'll have self-respect, you'll have better friends, and if you speak your truth loudly enough, 
you'll start to gain a following. People will start to notice. You will start to make a positive change in other people's lives because those people know that they can listen to a thousand people that are saying the same thing as everybody else is saying, but why would they waste their time listening to those people, right? They have nothing to offer. Most of society has this void inside themselves because they don't have any of their own values. Everything that they believe comes from outside. What they believe is what they're told to believe. So when they find somebody like you who is able to stand for your own truth, they'll do one of two things. Either they will try to destroy you or they'll follow you. And this has a contagious effect. By you standing up for your truth, you are inspiring hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of people to stand up for their truth. Maybe even just a little bit at a time. And then every time somebody else stands up for his truth, then all of the people around him are inspired a little bit more to stand up for their truth. So you are making society better in a way that you cannot possibly understand. There are evil forces in the world who want to control everything and everyone. And one of the best ways that they can do that to control the people is to push a top-down propaganda message and enforce a compliance mechanism. And the compliance mechanism that they use is ridicule, is social ostracization, is deplatforming. We are programmed by this propaganda mechanism, which comes to us through the education system, through the news, through the media, through Hollywood. It comes to us in all of the angles of influence to get us, one, to buy in or to pretend to buy in to whatever the official narrative is, and two, to shun the people who don't buy in. And I think this compliance mechanism worked better on my generation than almost anybody else. I remember when I was in college, right? Millennials who go to college, like 67% of millennials went to college, and all 67% of them thought that they were better than everybody else because they went to college, because our parents had told us that if we went to college, that made us better than everybody else. So if you think about it, 67%, that's two thirds, that's the majority of our generation went to college, and the majority of people think that they're superior to everybody else. How does that work, right? The average and below average people of the population uh, all took the same track so that they could feel superior. It's funny, I think maybe sometime in the past it was actually true that the smartest people went to college, but now college is kind of like an intellectual stamp on mediocre minds, that the people who are the most unremarkable in every way go to college so that they can have somebody else validate that they're better than everybody else. Anyway, my experience when I went to college, and yeah, I got duped into it too, was a huge amount of pressure to conform. And I didn't conform. And as a result, uh, most of the friends, friends that I had in college don't want to have anything to do with me anymore. And I admit that I have some of the blame for that because I was pretty abrasive about it. You know, I was very reactionary, which is something that you have to learn to, to mitigate because when you realize that everybody else is just a mirror of the propaganda that they're told, you have complete disdain, you have contempt for those people, and you act really abrasively. You have zero respect for them, and you just want to lash back at those people because they're so pathetic. But you learn with time, hopefully, that being abrasive isn't really helping your cause, right? That these people are lost and they need help, and if you want to help them, being nasty to them just isn't going to do the trick. So anyway, I fell into that. I was abrasive. I was nasty to people because I had zero respect for them because of their lack of authenticity. So you don't want to fall into that trap either, but the point is that this mechanism is something that exists for a reason, that it's a top-down tool for the, the people who run society to force compliance from all of us little peons. And school trains us to do this, right? I mean, I talked about in this video how school is basically compliance training. School is training you to sit down, shut up, and follow directions. That's what school is, and it's 12 years or more because they want to beat any possibility of dissent out of you. And then they also train you 
to do this to other people. If somebody else stands up for something that's against the status quo, that's against the conventional belief that they've forced on everybody, then you are trained to beat that person down, to ostracize that person, to ridicule that person, to fire that person from your company. Whatever you can do to harm that person so as to discourage dissent in the future, that's what you're supposed to do. It reminds me of a few months ago, uh, I was in Brazil and I was talking to a woman who had a 16-year-old daughter, and this woman was expressing a belief that she had that was very politically incorrect, and she was saying it in a near whisper because she was afraid that her teenage daughter was going to overhear. So think about this. This is a parent, a mother, who is afraid of the disapproval of a teenage daughter. But that's exactly how the system is set up. You know, in fully communist countries, the, the kids will report their parents for thinking wrongly. They will report their parents to the government and the government will punish them for it. There is a reason that oppressive governments force kids to go to school under government supervision. The highly impressionable children are indoctrinated into whatever the government wants them to believe and then they are the enforcers of that doctrine. The kids who have very little of their own life experience, who have very little knowledge, but can regurgitate what the government told them to believe, they are in charge of keeping their parents' thoughts in line. Anyway, I thought that was interesting, but the point is that our, if you are willing to stand strong in what you believe, speak your truth, be authentic to your values, no matter what names they call you, right? And you can figure out when they're applying this strategy because they have certain labels that they prefer, right? They like to call you a denier or a ist or a phobe of some kind, or they call you a kook or a quack or a dangerous loon. They try to curb your freedom of speech. They say that you can't say what you're saying because it's too dangerous. They say that your speech is violent, even if you're doing nothing to incite violence at all. They have this certain vocabulary that they use when they're interested in getting rid of free thought and enforcing compliance. So standing up for your truth means that you have to be willing to be called those things. And I think that a lot of people don't really know how to stand up for their own values, how to stand up for their own truth. And the truth is that this takes over a lot more of our lives than just the part about oh, speaking when it's politically incorrect or when you're risking somebody calling you a denier or whatever it is. This comes to play in a lot more subtle ways as well. And so I'm going to show you how to recognize those. So whenever you're thinking of doing any action, of buying something, of saying something, of recording a video, whatever it is, just ask yourself honestly, why am I doing this? In fact, you can learn a lot about yourself. You just ask why you're doing the things you're doing and then be honest with yourself. If the answer to that question is, oh, well, I want to impress so-and-so. Oh, well, I want people to think I'm smart. I want people to think I'm funny. I want people to be jealous of me. I want to show so-and-so that I'm better than him. I want to prove to Mrs. Maloney from the third grade class that I'm not a failure like she told me I was going to be. Or this is my favorite one. I want to go to this destination so I can get a good picture for Instagram so everybody will see how cool I am. You see the common thread with all of these. It's, I am doing what I am doing to affect how somebody else thinks towards me. In most cases, it's not even people that you care about. It's not even to help other people. It's just so that somebody think that you're cool or you're smart or you're well put together. When you start to take a little step back and notice why you're doing the things you're doing, you might just find that you're doing everything for everybody else's impressions and doing very little for yourself and for your own self-respect. So the biggest thing that you need to do if you're going to start living a life that you can be proud of is start recognizing your own motivations and if you catch yourself, which you will, I guarantee that you will because it's ingrained into us, if you catch yourself doing something or failing to do something because of what somebody else might think of it, then take a different action. Reevaluate what you're doing and live for your own truth instead of for somebody else. And yes, in some cases, you might risk losing friends. You might risk being ostracized. You might risk being labeled a denier or a phobe or an ist of some kind. You might risk people thinking that you're crazy, but I promise you 
that it's absolutely 100% worth it. And I also promise you, this is exactly what I'm gonna do on my YouTube channel. I'm not gonna be quiet just because some people label me or some people think I'm crazy. In fact, if some portion of the viewers don't think I'm crazy, then I'm not doing my job. My commitment is to always be on that line where I am pushing the frontiers of thought, not just regurgitating what everybody else says, and I'm always gonna be on that line where some people think I'm crazy. I hope you'll join me and commit to doing the same thing in your own life. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I think you'll also really enjoy this video, all about how Ricky Gervais' speech at the Golden Globes shows exactly how you can be successful in 2020. And of course, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe, and share this video with all of your friends who definitely need to hear it.